If you were going to name a Chevrolet SUV that was real fancy, what would you call it? Hmm. <clears throat> I'd have to think about that because I'd want something really creative. It's called a Denali. And a Denali, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. And guess what? Oh, no. We just named, just named a mountain of the highest peak in America, North America, <laughs> very Alaska. Creative, very creative. creative. <laughs> All right. It's a Denali. So it's a big Chevrolet uh, instead of Mount McKinley. And the people in Ohio are furious because they, they, they've taken away their president. All right. Anyhow. So if you want to climb one, I don't know if a K2 is the big. I'm not a mountain climber. I have a North Face jacket, but I don't do <laughs> that's climbing. That's as far as you that's go, as right? That's as I'm going up the, <laughs> up the slopes. Well, anyhow, uh, let me ask you something else the president did in addition to taking away the name of Mount McKinley. Um, is the end of the world as we know it at hand because of global warming. Well, that's what our president said. He scared the daylights out of us. And guess what? I'm sure we need, we need massive government spending because something is going to happen. Whole countries will be underwater. Your children will be gasping for breath. They'll be uh, floating in a morass of frozen ice that is now melting. The problem is the American people just aren't worried. And a lot of people, and I'm one of them, just doesn't buy it. I think it's a lot of smoke and mirrors. Terry? Well, the president spoke in Alaska at the State Department summit on climate change. He says it's the biggest threat to the United States, as Dale Hurd has the story. The trip is intended to refocus attention on climate change. President Obama says if the climate isn't dealt with fast, entire countries could end up underwater. And the fact is that climate is changing faster than our efforts to address it. That, ladies and gentlemen, must change. We're not acting fast enough. The president says the science of climate change gets clearer every day and proves it's no longer a distant threat. And the president is correct that Alaska's climate is changing. Summer snow is forecast for this Friday. Alaska's climate has been changing for a long time. The poster child for climate change in Alaska, the Mendenhall Glacier, which is melting, was already melting in the 1700s and, according to scientists, had retreated one mile by the 1900s. Some scientists say Alaska has been warming recently because of a reversal in the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, a 60-year cycle that sends warmer air to Alaska. Still, Mr. Obama seemed to warn his political opponents not to ignore what he has called the number one threat to the United States, climate change. Any so-called leader who does not take this issue seriously or treats it like a joke is not fit to lead. On this issue, of all issues, there is such a thing as being too late. And that moment is almost upon us. That's why we're here today. But regular Americans do not take the issue seriously. A Gallup poll this year about the issues Americans are most concerned about had climate change dead last. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Well, you know, if the president wants to do something, <clears throat> he's got to force China and India into the fold because they're the big polluters. It's not the United States. But what he wants to do is, is make a major grab to take over more of American industry. He wants to take over the coal industry. He wants to take over the gas-powered uh, electric industry. He wants to take over the uh, manufacturing industries. He wants the government to control it all, and it'll be in the name of climate change. I'm going to keep you from this horrible thing that is lurking at your doorstep. It's all smokescreen to mask a, uh, well, uh, interventionist agenda that this is part of he's tried to take over the health care industry and has done a pretty good job of taking it over uh, he wants to take over the financial industry he wants control of everything that is the progressive agenda so anyhow that's the way it is the ladies and gentlemen people are warning uh, the recent supreme court decision uh, giving constitutional protection to the mar marriage of two homosexual men or two lesbian women, um, that uh, was questionable. And Chief Judge Roberts said it very well. Who do you think, who do we think we are?
coming down with something that has been uh, an established norm of society for hundreds and hundreds of years. Well, we're going to begin to see the fallout as there will be persecution time and time again against those people who disagree with the prevailing view that sodomy should be the law of the land and should be practiced openly and without any uh, restraints whatsoever. Well, a Christian clerk in Kentucky is still defying a ban uh, that she wants to, will not give uh, licenses to same-sex couples. But the Supreme Court just ruled against her, and John Jessup has that story. That's right, Pat. The continued refusal to issue marriage licenses comes after the Supreme Court ruled against the Kentucky County Clerk, who stopped issuing them because of her Christian convictions and opposition to gay marriage. This morning, once again, the Rowan County Clerk's Office denied marriage licenses to two same-sex couples. Kim Davis, the elected clerk, had stopped issuing all marriage licenses after the Supreme Court legalized gay marriage back in June. Her attorneys had appealed to the Supreme Court to stay a lower federal court order to start granting them. Her refusal means she could face fines or even jail time. Davis's attorney has said she is aware of the consequences. The State Department has released 7,000 more of Hillary Clinton's emails and more than 125 of them contain censored classified material. The emails come from Clinton's tenure as Secretary of State when she used a personal email server instead of sending those sensitive messages through protected State Department servers. The emails include complaints from staffers who express concerns about discussing sensitive diplomatic matters outside the government's secure messaging systems. The issue has hurt Mrs. Clinton badly in the polls, with voters frequently describing her as a liar and dishonest. Pat? Well, it's going to be a continuous drip of these documents as they're released every month or so. Uh, her campaign is in tatters and it's going to be impossible to get it back on track. I don't see how she's going to do it. But the thing maybe they're trying to cover up and it would be devastating if it's true. Did she as Secretary of the State solicit uh, gifts to the Clinton Foundation from countries with whom she was dealing with heads of state, with uh, sovereign wealth funds, et cetera. That's what we don't know, and that's what we'll have to find out. Well, there's good news for a dear friend of ours, Governor Bob McDonald of Virginia. Uh, the Supreme Court ruled in his favor in a matter. It's just a, a minor matter, but it's very important. John? Pat, former Virginia Governor Bob McDonnell will not have to go to prison while the Supreme Court considers whether to review his convictions on public corruption. That ruling from the Supreme Court overturns a lower court's decision that McDonnell would have to report to prison to serve his two-year sentence. McDonnell has until early November to ask the high court to consider his case. He and his wife, Maureen, were convicted last September of granting favors for wealthy businessmen in exchange for gifts and loans. The Supreme Court's ruling gives McDonnell a glimmer of hope after recent legal battle losses. Well, Mark Levin, the popular radio show host and author, has a strong warning for Americans in his new book called Plunder and Deceit. The government in Washington is getting too big and oppressive, and he says it's taking away your future. And it appears people are listening. Levin's book has hit number one on the New York Times bestseller list. David Brody recently sat down with him for a closer look at his latest message to the masses. On the radio, Mark Levin pulls no punches with his millions of listeners. We're fighting for our society and the Constitution. What are they fighting for? To take it all away from us. And as an author, he's fighting mad, too. In his latest book, Plunder and Deceit, he has a strong, clear warning for America, taking direct aim at what he sees as the threat posed by a growing, powerful federal government. It's transitioning into something that is, is, is more oppressive and coercive, and it's transitioning to something that is not constitutional. And Levin says it's the next generation that will be in the crosshairs. That's the focus of the book, a clinical, factual dissection of how liberal federal government policies, be they social, environmental, or economic, are ruining the future. Future generations don't vote. They don't exist yet. So they keep stealing from them, they keep robbing from them, which means they're going to have limited liberty, they're going to have limited opportunity, limited wealth creation, and we're spending it all today. This is something that is really unbelievable, that we are stealing from unborn babies a, a, a 
Lord knows how far into the future. Just one of Levin's examples of the dangers America and the next generation face, Social Security. The longtime entitlement program needs structural changes to survive. And while solutions to change it have been around for years, nothing is being done. Not only that, Levin lays out the case that Social Security is already technically bankrupt. I don't even think people who receive these benefits know what's going on. Many of them don't know that the money doesn't exist. All that money that they paid into the system, there is no system. That money was taken and it was spent the second it was taken on other government projects and other government programs. So where does this leave the next generation? What can be done? How do you get younger Americans, the next generation, if you will, involved in, in, in these issues and to take notice of what's going on in this country? One at a time. There are millions and millions of parents and grandparents who know exactly what I'm talking about. And they are worried about what's going on in this country. And they know, as I know, intuitively and through intellect, that the country's headed in a very bad place. And it's moving there very, very quickly. Levin sees plunder and deceit as a pamphlet to equip communities with facts that they are going to hopefully share with others in a variety of settings. In the home, during the holidays, at the dinner table, at the breakfast table, if they're younger, when you're putting your kids to bed. Those are the circumstances. We, as parents and grandparents, have more influence on our children and grandchildren than we can possibly know. Levin believes change won't come from Washington. Just like in Revolutionary War days, change comes from we the people, because he believes ideas stir up action and lead to consequences. I think tens of millions of us are extremely concerned about where this country's going. Maybe we're in the majority, maybe we're not. I don't know, but there are tens of millions of us and that's a big army of people. If thousands of us, not even millions of us, let alone tens of millions of us, really take this seriously, you don't know where we can go with this because in this great country, there are many great people who will do many great things. David Brody, CBN News, Washington. Thanks, David. Pat, that's a really engaging conversation. This is the call to action by a very articulate gentleman. You know, it, it, there were 17,000 people in the Bolshevik rev Revolution that overtook, overturned the uh, czarist regime of Russia. It doesn't take a, a huge army. It takes a group of dedicated people to a cause that is righteous. And in the case of America, the cause is righteous. This, this government is out of control. Uh, we've lost the Constitution. We've lost the biblical foundations of our society. Our courts have done irreparable harm to the moral fabric of this nation. And they have given us uh, over 50, maybe as many as 55 million abortions. The slaughter has been unparalleled. And that's just the beginning of what we've done. But this, uh, this wasting of resources 18, uh, it goes so fast it's hard to keep up with. It used to be 17 trillion, now I think it's about 18 trillion dollars and, and mounting as fast as it can. And nobody's stopping it.